Uh, thank you very much, Julie, for that. Uh, good evening, uh, everybody, uh, ladies and gentlemen. What, what we're going to cover this, this morning, this evening, is a topic that we often dismiss uh, because we generally focus on mostly our safety critical activities, particularly on site. So this particular training session or, or webinar is going to focus on display screen equipment associated with the office environment, ergonomics, what is a user, uh, what criteria they should be working under. Now, this presentation was written for UK, uh, and it does contain, if you look at the agenda, legal requirements. Now, although there's not a legal requirement in Qatar to consider or assess, sorry, to assess the risks associated with display screen equipment, uh, there is a requirement in both the labour law uh, and QCS to ensure the health and safety and well-being of our employers whilst at work. So it is sort of covered under that criteria, okay, as uh, we, we have a duty of care. So we need to consider the importance of adjusting our workstation because you'll be surprised how long we actually uh, accommodate or, or may maintain at a work workstation. And if you look at somebody that's working in an office environment, it can lead up to probably eight hours, uh, 12 hours a day working with display screen equipment. Okay, we need to consider how to correctly uh, design our workstations and what equipment and furniture that we do need because there are standards that need to be followed. You can't just get a deck chair out from the garden uh, and, and make up your own table. There are standards that need to be followed. For example, uh, your, your workstation should be at a minimum of 720 millimeters high. Now, why it's set at 720 millimeters high, is that because that is because 95% of the population can sit under that desk without adjusting uh, the height of the desk or adjusting them themselves. Uh, there's criteria for the type of chair that should be used. Your chair, when you're working at a desk, uh, should have five adjustments. That's lumbar support, height adjustments, and neck adjustments. Some chairs have armrests, and that's not considered part of the design criteria. Armrests are normally considered as, as, a, as a luxury. So hazards and potential health effects related to DSCs. Now, normally these escalate as you get older. Uh, sometimes you don't feel the onset of, for example, carpal tunnel disease, elbow soreness and upper uh, shoulder problems until it's too late. And like with any sort of health and safety uh, management system, it's about pre preventing the onset of disease before it occurs because most of these symptoms that you can or will or could experience there's not a lot you can do about it other than to stop stop working so it's important to make sure that your workstation is set up correctly to mitigate any any health effect that you're likely to be exposed to uh, okay self-assessment now as I said earlier, a few minutes ago, there is a legal requirement to assess the risks associated with DSCs, uh, display screen equipment, i.e. your computer. What we've done, what I've done in our office is we've got everybody to do a self-assessment, uh, complete a form to make sure that their workstation is set up uh, considering ergonomics, uh, etc. So I'm happy to share uh, the self-assessment form with you guys so that you can uh, use uh, to, to, to assess the risk. Okay, the next one, obviously, open discussions. Uh, like with most of the, all of these uh, presentations, at the end, there is a question and answer uh, session. So if you can remain uh, till then, if you've got any questions that you need asked, then even myself or somebody else in the audience or Julie may be able to answer. So that's the agenda. That's what we're going to cover. Okay, definition, DSC. This is any alphanumeric or graphical display screen. Uh, now, obviously, in the office environment, this is the monitor that you look at, but it does include handheld devices as well. Uh, even to the extent your mobile phone is a display screen equipment, uh, tablets, etc. cetera. Uh, tax, taxis have uh, display screen equipment so all the time in their, their vehicles. So the definition of a display screen equipment 
is anything that provides information graphically on a monitor. User means, because the law only covers if you use a display screen equipment in connection with work. So if, for example, you monitor or you switch on your computer at home and go on Facebook or video games, the legislation and the requirements don't cover that type of activities. So the requirements, as with all risk uh, opportunities and issues, only cover whilst you are at work or using that equipment in the course of work. User means an employer who habitually uses. Now, habitually, that might be somebody like a visitor, somebody wants to hot desk where they don't have a permanent uh, setup, office setup. They don't have the obligatory type desk and chairs, etc. They've come into the office to do some uh, short term work and they need to accommodate a space where they can do this. If they are habitual users, temporary users, the same requirements are uh, complied just because they're uh, temporary users. Excuse me, it doesn't mean that you have to shortcut and uh, not consider their health and safety well being. There's two definitions there use means for in connection with work, and the user means an employer who habitually uses DSDs, display screen equipment. Okay, and we're looking at. Okay, that's a much more pop up. Look at that. What is a workstation? Uh, I've touched upon some of them, but they also include other uh, uh, support functions as well. Uh, your mobile phone, your fax machines, et cetera, and the environment that you are working in. And when we look at the environment, we're looking at lighting and noise, slip trip hazards, et cetera. So workstation isn't just your desk. It's the environment where you have to perform that work as well and where your, your office space, your, your desk is, has been set up. Workstation means any assemble comprising of the DSC, your computer, and yourself, the operator. Any operational accessory to the DSC, so if you attach anything to your, your monitor or your laptop or your screen, that is part of your setup as well. So if you've got printers attached, uh, modems attached, etc., they're all part of your, your office setup, your desk setup. So anything that you need to assist you with your DSC work is, is uh, considered an accessory device. Any disk drive, so telephone, modem, printer, okay, document holder, workstation, and, and desk. The immediate work environment around the display screen equipment. So that's what I mentioned there. The right lighting, uh, noise, what you don't want is your workstation set up right next to the photocopier or the fax machine where everybody's going to keep walking past using it, causing distractions and nuisance noise. So you really want the uh, accessories like photocopies and fax machines as far away as possible. And also that aids exercise as well, because it means you have to get off your backside and walk to the photocopier, uh, rather than just reaching out, staying in one place all, all the time. So these are some of the things that, that consider and consist of your workstation. User criteria. Okay, the job cannot be done effectively or at all with without the use of your computer. The worker has no discretion over whether to use the computer or not. Now, this is where senior management are exempt from the criteria because they have the discretion to get somebody else to do that work, obviously in the ideal work. But generally, senior management CROs, they're not considered users because, as I said, they can pass this function over to somebody else if they choose to. It's where the user has no alternative other than to use a computer, display screen equipment to do his or her, her work. The job requires significant training or particular skills, so CAD operators, uh, traffic control people, etc. This is, is used for a period of one hour or more at a time, uh, and that's that's obviously consistency uh, con continually. Uh, however, nowadays we don't really sit at a computer or type for more than or an hour. I might be saying that sometimes uh, we, we do. 
Okay, the task demand depends on fast transfer of information. Attention and concentration demands are high, particularly if you're doing data input and analyzing data, graphs, etc., preparing presentations, uh, those sorts of activities. And these are like just, you know, you know, I think we've got six there. So these are one of, if any one of these six is comply or meet your requirements or, or what your guys are doing in the office, then you are considered a user of a display screen equipment. And if you are considered a user of a display display, then you have a duty of care for the health and well-being. Okay, back facts. Now this is some of the major problems with uh, DSC. When you're sitting down, you are using your muscles, okay? Uh, and if you don't get up and exercise, uh, your, your back's gonna start aching. Uh, you're gonna build up muscle fluid, etc., and you're not gonna be, get, get rid of it. So back, back problems are generally the common types of symptoms that people that sit at their computer desk for a long period of time will start to suffer. And normally it's not something that's safety critical or health critical, spinal damage, hernia, etc. It's generally that pain and discomfort. You know when you've been sitting uncomfortably at a workstation, because the first thing that you would do is you stand up and you would stretch your back and you would put it into that nice S shape uh, that your spine wants to be at. So back facts. Uh, over 119 million working days are lost every year to back problems. And this is, you know, the, the pain and discomfort uh, generally in the, in the lower back. And you see this when people are stooping over their workstation, typing sideways rather than face on, you know, something's got to give. And as you said, it's generally your poor little back, the lower part, the lumbar reason that suffers, suffers first. So make, make sure that we all we'll sit up straight and, and adopt a good good working position. Most valuable uh, age group for injuries is between 16 and 14, 44, because that's when we're at work and that's when we're using our computers a lot. Having said that, there is more research now that younger people are experiencing repetitive strain injuries due to the constant use of video games on their mobile phones, et cetera. And if you look at your keyboard, uh, any keyboard, your keyboard is not ergonomically designed for the type for your for your hand. And this is why the research is saying now there's going to be a prevalence of a younger group of people that are going to start experience musculoskeletal problems uh, in the lower part of the hands and the uh, lower part of the upper upper joint. So something that we need to be aware of if you've got children is to minimize or reduce the amount of time that they are spending on these, these keyboards, particularly laptops. If you look at your laptop keys and you compare that with a standard, uh, be a standard type keyboard, you will see that the keys are a lot closer together. Your hand is not designed for long-term use on a laptop. Uh, that's why they're laptops for poor Portable, portable use, but nowadays everybody has a laptop. So if you are going to use your laptop, connect it to a ergonomically type key, keyboard, uh, which is designed to reduce any any symptoms or, or strain on your on your fingers. Okay, common cause of back pains are a poor workplace design. Uh, as you as you see, your, your laptop, your monitor, your it should be directly in front of you, and you should be using it directly in front of it, not stooping or twisting or your desk is accumulated with so much paperwork and other accessories that don't need to be there and you're struggling to maintain a good back posture posture extended periods worked in a fixed position as i said the muscles are still working even in a fixed position it builds up acetic acid and if you don't release that acid that's when your muscles are going to start aching and becoming sore so make sure that you get up and 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 stretch uh like judy judy mentioned earlier on if you're good at yoga do some yoga at your desk you know you need to get up and flex your body it's not designed to sit down for long periods of time and what you see is when people are sitting at long periods of time at their workstation that's when they start resting backwards or leaning forwards etc so try to not uh, spend too much time sitting in one position uh, for, for too long. Every five minutes in an hour, 
get up and walk. That's why you see in most offices now, all the accessories, like I said, photocopiers, fax machines, are all as far away from your workstation as possible. So it means you have to get up and go and walk to them. In the old days, we used to accommodate our desk with all sorts and it became, okay, there's no reason for me to get up. So, you know, get, get, get up and walk, get up and exercise, do some stretching. Okay, lack, lack of exercise, which I just mentioned, that's because you're sitting down. And as I said, just do, you know, go on YouTube while you're sitting there and do some basic, basic simple stretching, flexing the fingers, flexing the arms, stretching your legs. Poor seat design. Uh, most office chairs now are ergonomically designed. As I said, they have the five adjustments and they have five casters. Uh, but you do get, and I do see in our office, where they're leaning back, tired, they're twisted, typing, uh, they're stooping forward, et cetera. The, the seat that's being provided is has been designed for a purpose to encourage you to sit up straight. And most of us, well, okay, I'm sure all of us know what ergonomic means. It means adjusting the workspace to your needs. You shouldn't have to just, you shouldn't have to shorten yourself, you shouldn't have to lose weight, put on weight, or grow taller. The type of chair and your workstation is the same as your car, it fits all people. So if your workstation isn't adjustable, then you may find that you need to adjust yourself, and by doing that, you're gonna put yourself in a very compromising uh, work, work position. So make sure that you're, you know how to adjust all the components of your seat, that you can adopt a good position. The main, the main uh, adjustable command is a lumbar support at the bottom. There'll be a, a, a dial there that you can wind in or out to keep your uh, spine in a nice, nice shape. Okay, poor posture. This is your spine. This is where it wants to be. This is how Mother Nature produced it in that nice S shape here. And in between each vertebrate, there are discs. And this is a very strong part of our anatomy. It acts as a carrier, it supports all the nerves, it acts as a shock absorber. You start damaging this, particularly down here, here. And this is where you're gonna see pain and discomfort uh, from poor seating positions here. But you should be sitting, if you look at your, your workstation tomorrow when you go there, you'll see that your chair is designed to follow the concourse of your spine, okay? If the lumbar support is pushed into forward, it's gonna bend this. If the upper neck region is too far backwards, it's going to push this backwards. So make sure that you keep this image in your head. When you're at your workstation, your chair should be designed, if you look at the back of your chair, it should follow that, that shape. And if you just slightly rest against it, you'll know that you're sitting in a in a good good posture. Okay, work chair. Okay, we mentioned about the work chair, but you're looking at right degrees here. Uh, this should be right angle. This should be right angle, and this should be right angle here, so that you're not resting your forearm on the desk. If you have to, then get a a, a wrist mat, because I know you can't see it on this picture here but this is where your carpal tunnel is. You know, your fingers work on remote control. If you move your fingers in and out, there's no muscles doing that, okay? They're attached to ligaments and the muscles that move your fingers are in your forearm. So there has to be uh, ligaments and attachments. If you're resting those touch just below the forearm, just at the wrist, if you look at your wrist, and you can see flexing, you can see your ligaments all moving up and down. If you're putting pressure on that during the course of your workstation, they will start wearing out, and that's where you start getting bad fingers and carpal tunnel syndrome. So your seat should follow the 90 degree rule. The angle between the trunk and the thigh should be 90 degrees as well. And thigh and lower legs also should be at 90 degrees. If you can't get that 90 degrees, okay, because you're too tall or too high, you raise the desk. If you're too short and you can't reach the floor, you get a footrest. What you don't want to do is bend that any lower because all you're doing is you're forcing more blood down to 
here, pull in, and that's when we get the blockage veins, etc. And the same with here, uh, too low, more blood, too high, less blood. So try and, and, and adopt that position. And once again, if you see the back of the chair here, it's supporting the contours of his spine. The, the screen should be at eye level, the top of the screen, round about there, and it should be tilted back round about 20 degrees. That puts your neck at its most relaxed position. If it's tilted forward, you're looking down. If it's tilted too far back, you're looking at, and your head weighs approximately 70% of your body weight. So that's a lot of weight uh, resting on the upper, upper spine. So just be careful, you know, make sure that your workstation is set. If you're using a laptop, then you need a laptop holder to raise the monitor up to this high, and the laptop should be connected to a separate keyboard. Okay, shoulders should be neutral, blah, 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 et cetera. Elbows at 90 with, with wrist, wrist straights. Okay, you also need to consider the following facts uh, during uh, any working day with DSEs. Don't wait till you become tired or fatigued, okay? Get up before then. As I said, I would recommend every five minutes, uh, within 45 minutes, just get up and walk and stretch, move your hands about. So don't wait till you get tired before you rest, okay? Uh, rest before the onset of fatigue. Short breaks appear to be better than long ones, so don't wait and cram everything in in the morning knowing that you've got a nice one hour lunch break, okay? Take your breaks at regular interviews. As I said, you, you need to get up and move, you need to flex and move, move the body about. Uh, don't prolong sitting at a workstation for anything longer than 45 minutes. Take breaks, okay, your breaks. Uh, don't, you know, your workstation isn't your canteen. It, it's, it's not where you can sit there and eat your nice roast dinner or your chicken sandwich, etc. cetera. Uh, it's a place of work. So take take your breaks away you know, from your workstation. Go somewhere else to your canteen or, or meeting room to take your lunch. We, we wouldn't encourage taking your meal breaks or any breaks at your workstation. And even if you get a cup of coffee, you know, go take your cup of coffee elsewhere. Funny enough, smokers don't suffer the same uh, symptoms as many other, okay, they die of cancer, but smokers take their breaks. You know, a smoker would take 15 minute break every half an hour if they're a heavy smoker. So they're always away from their, their computers. Uh, Okay, regulations do not specify, okay, there's no requirement that specifies the length of frequency, but every five minutes uh, in an hour is sufficient just to get up uh, and walk, have a, have a walk, to, to stretch your legs a little bit, go for coffee or to go and do something else. Okay, your office should, uh, and I covered this uh, here, 90 degrees, 20, I can't see that slide there at the corner, but adjust the chair so that they are in a comfortable and convenient position. And these are the things that you need to check. Now, if we're site safety practitioners or we're roaming tra traffic uh, safety practitioners, you know, just walk around the, uh, the, the office and do yourself a little self-assessment and start seeing if you've got a problem here where your users aren't adopting the correct position at their workstations. And, and throw out, you know, this is a very simple training package that, that's available to you guys. So check that, the shoulders are relaxed, okay? They're not stooped forwards or backwards. The spine is in contact with the backrest at all times. You will find that most users aren't familiar with that approach. They don't understand what the purpose of the backrest in your chair is, and they don't really know how to adjust it. So you might need to just give them a little bit of one-to-one -one training. Eyes are at the same level and at the top of the screen, approximately 20 degrees to view the screen. The feet are flat on the floor. If not, provide a foot rest. They shouldn't have to stretch. Work desk or work surface, it should be a matte finish. Okay, that comes in a minute. It should be large enough for the user to work comfortably and flexible arrangement of the screen. A desk that accommodates too much junk, too much paperwork, too much support equipment is not ideal. You should have at least one meter of free space. And that's for your keyboard and your computer and no other accessory, no documents or nothing. So if your desk is cluttered, it means that you need a bigger desk or you need to do a bit of housekeeping and, and filing. Okay, so make sure that your desk is, is large enough. 
uh, one desk, one person. You don't want to see two or three persons huddle around a, a desk. Okay. Low reflective surface. You don't want any glare coming from the desk, from outside lighting, uh, outside lights, or lights that are in your room. However, saying that, most office lights now don't use halogen bulbs. They, they use lights that have got diffusers that spread the arc of the light equally over your workstation. But you, you don't want any shiny type workstation finish. Adequate leg room in to allow easy access. Once again, underneath your desk, it's not a storage area. It's where your legs go and that is it. It's not a place where you can store files, boxes, office equipment, other material, etc. It needs to be free so that you can move easily, uh, stretch your legs and move side to side. Your desk is underneath the desk, it's not a, a storage area. Okay. Da, 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 da. The display screen itself, you need to be able to adjust it first, you know, the font size, the clarity, the brightness, etc., etc. If you don't, get your IT to come along and show you what font keys that you need to uh, adjust just the actual screen itself. But the characters, they need to be well defined. You shouldn't be squinting, trying to look at what you're writing or trying to read. Clearly form, adequately signed and adequately spacing. All these are adjustable. By the, by the way, uh, so find the best option that fits your, your eyesight. Okay, image should be stable, okay, not flickering all over the place, and brightness and contrast easily adjustable. Okay, so you need to know where the shortcut keys are or how to set uh, the brightness and the contrast of your, of your screen. Some people like it dark, sometimes people like it light. If you've got a very light environment, and you might want to tone it down a little bit and vice versa. Screen, the screen itself should swivel. Remember you need 20 degrees. It's no point having a, excuse me, a fixed screen. Uh, it needs to be adjustable. It needs to be able to go up, down, left, right, and tilt forward and backwards. And free from reflective glare. You know, don't put your, your monitor directly uh, behind where the lights are right behind it, the sunlight's coming on. Ideally, your monitor should be right angles to a window. And that gives you the, the, the best illumination uh, for your screen and it limits any, any reflective glare. And you can turn this screen onto black and you can see where the light source is coming from. If you've got lights directly above you, that are too bright, you might want to take out one of the, the, the bulbs or as I said, get diffusers put into the light cassette case. Keyboard itself uh, needs to be clean. Uh, Surprised at how many people touch the screen and turn it over and see 10 years worth of dead skin <laughs> floating about in between. So make sure that you regularly clean your keyboard. Uh, you know, don't touch a keyboard and touch your face. There's billions of bacteria living and breeding within each key. So make sure it's regularly clean. As I said, if you want to test this, get your keyboard, uh, get a piece of white paper, turn it over on the white paper and just give it a tap and you'll see what's been living in your keyboard. So make sure that your keyboards are clean, whether you want to put a mat over it uh, and try to avoid touching your face uh, when, when you're typing. So the keyboard must be separate from the screen and tiltable. Okay, so you can adopt the correct position, must be mat service and keys arranged to facilitate easy use symbols, adequately contrast and legible. Adequate space in front to support the hands and the arms of the user. So it means that your desk needs to be big enough to support the, user, uh, the monitor and the keyboard. Remember, your monitor is at a distance indicative of your eyesight. Okay, so that would dictate where everything else is placed. And when you look at a screen, you're doing something that you don't normally do. What you're doing is you are viewing something at middle distance. Generally, our eyesight is designed for long distance when we're looking ahead or short distance when we're reading a book. The only time we use our eyesight for middle distance viewing is when we're working with a computer. And this is why in England, you are required, your employer is required to provide you with an eyesight test for middle distance viewing only. Okay, so make sure that your desk can accommodate 
the distance of the monitor that suits you and that your keyboard can be positioned so that it's not on the edge and you've got enough space to position your, your hands and forearms. Okay, main hazards, work-related upper limb disorder. This is because you've been sitting at your desk for your entire life in a static position and something has to go. Your body's not designed to be in that position. Now, it may be fine for a week, a month, maybe a couple of years, maybe 10 years, but eventually something is going to start to happen. You are start to going to become sore, worn out, et cetera. Uh, so one of the key main hazards is, is upper limb disorder. Muscles and tendons can become painful with repetitive movement. And this is just like moving your mouth left and right all day. You know, your hand's not designed to go left and right all, all the time. This is where you want, you know, maybe a roller or use the shortcut keys uh, rather than keep moving that. Repetitive strain RSI, uh, carpal tunnel disease, and you can see here, you know, there's, there's no muscles here. These are your remote controls here, these ligaments, okay, that pull all your fingers as the muscle down here flex. If you're resting this on your desk, this is filled with a jelly-like uh, serum, which allows these uh, ligaments to slide nice and easy. If that starts drying out because you are putting too much pressure on it, get to 50, get to 40, you won't be able to even open your hand without feeling some form of pain or discomfort. So try to just not put too much pressure on, on your uh, carpal tunnel. Tennis elbows, muscle soreness where your arms in a static position or too high where the blood's not circulating, etc. Lack of movement leads to reduced circulations. And you know, this is why I said earlier on, make sure that you get up, you move, you flex. Uh, reduced exchange of tissue fluid because it's stagnant, it's got nowhere to go. It, you know, your muscles are still working, you've got to release that fluid somehow. Production of lactic acid. Fatigue and discomfort. How many times have we gone home at the end of the day and your eyes are hanging out of their head because they've just been concentrating in front of a monitor all day? Now, the problem is when you're looking at a monitor all day, you blink less. And if you blink less, you'll dry, your eyes will dry a lot quicker. Also, your monitor will give off static electricity. Static electricity dries the air in the environment that you're working with. So coupled with... Uh, it, expressive use of the eye, a dry environment, and you're blinking less, you're blinking far less, uh, your eyes are going to be hanging out the head, uh, out your head. It's not advisable to wear contact lenses when you're working with a, a, a DSC, when you're doing DSC works. If you need contact lenses, replace them for BDU, uh, DSC type, type glasses. And your opticians, as I said, will give you a test for that middle distance viewing. So just be careful, you've got uh, six onclear muscles that rotate the eye left, right, up and down, etc. You've got a focal lens that moves in and out, uh, and you've got uh, iris that reduces your light. Curve. You know, that part of your anatomy is going to get tired if you overuse it. So when you're using your monitor and you're transcribing from a document, make sure that the document's at the same distance as what you are typing. Uh, instead of on the desk, you know, we, we, there's things called document holders. If you're typing with a document on the desk and you're typing on the screen, you're constantly moving your neck, looking at the document, looking at your monitor, look at the document, blah, blah, blah. You're probably doing that a thousand times a day, two thousand, two, uh, two days, et cetera, et cetera. And, and as I said, something will, will eventually go. Reduce toxicity of the muscles in its uh, dominant here, so once again, we, we encourage you know to, to stretch and exercise. Ability to cope with forces which are placed on them. Uh, if you're sitting in, you, you may have heard of the analogy that you can damage your back from lifting a feather from the floor. I, I've dealt with cases where somebody's damaged their back from lifting a laptop or their rucksack off the floor. If you adopt an incorrect position at your workstation and your spine is not in the correct position to lift something, and you get up out of your chair, oh, let me help you with that bag, and your back is not correctly positioned, you are going to damage it, maybe a prolapse or a minor hernia or something. But just be careful of, of additional features. 
predisposal of predispositions of in, in, in injuries as, as well. So you need to consider, as you said, any injuries that you already have that are going to exacerbate any future injuries that you're likely to have. Okay, using a laptop now. <clears throat> This is a difficult bit because laptops are not ergonomically designed. Laptops are portable devices for temporary use. But nowadays we use them as part of our, our system. Uh, if you are going to use a laptop, then make sure that you, if you are going to use a laptop for a considerable amount of time, make sure that you have a separate keyboard. You know, you can see the guy in this picture, his fingers are far more closer than they would be if you were using a conventional laptop. So make sure that your laptop is connected to a keyboard and your laptop is positioned in a docking station where the screen can be positioned at eye level and tilted back. Uh, if not, you shouldn't be using your laptop for more than an hour uh, a day. And never use your laptop on your lap because they get, particularly if you're a male, okay, because they get hot and you're going to start feeling some little problems in the genital area there. So try to avoid using your laptop uh, on, your, on your lap. Well, that says laptops. Okay, right, conclusion. Questions and answers. I'm probably going to answer myself here, but uh, can work with BDUs be stressful? Yes, of course they can uh, in several ways. Okay, pressure to meet deadlines. You've got your manager saying, I need this, I need this, and the paperwork is stacking up. So a bit of self-management, a bit of self-organization, a bit of self-prioritizing what's important, what's, what is urgent. Okay, poorly functioned systems. That's my mouse uh, isn't working properly, and it's a nightmare. I'm getting frustrated, I'm losing the keyboards, etc. So sometimes the system itself, if it keeps breaking down, uh, it's not logging on quickly, blah, 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 blah. Okay, yeah, yeah. so the answer is work, work reduce can, can be stressful. Lack of training on, on things. I'm taking drugs prescribed by my doctor. Can I still use a display, display screen equipment or visual display unit? Certain drugs may temporarily change your way your eyes focus, but this is not harmful. But just let your HR know and tell your doctor, will these affect my work? I work with uh, display screen equipment, computers a lot. Are there any issues that I need to be concerned of? But they will say that on the packet anyway. Okay, yes. There are no drugs which cannot be used safely combined with VDU work. Can VDUs cause headaches? Okay. Headaches can result from many factors, so pressures to meet deadlines, stress of pace, uh, anxiety and tensions about what you are doing, poor image quality and glare from screen, and I think poor posture. And the other one is the, the, the surrounding the light. You don't want sun glaring in on the time. You know, all the time that you've got bright light shining in your eyes, your eyes are trying to focus on that rather than on the screen. So we like to see vertical blinds rather than horizontal blinds because vertical blinds allow light to be diffused in and can be controlled a lot, a lot easier. Do VDUs give out harmful levels of radiations, uh, microwaves, etc.? VDUs give out both visible light and other forms of electromagnetic radiations, which can be harmful above certain levels. However, the levels emitted from your computer are well below the safe uh, levels of recommendations. However, if somebody is pregnant and anxious, you, you need to be a little bit empathetic uh, when, when reassuring them uh, because you said they are anxious uh, and, and, and concerned. So no concern, no, there's no problem, you'll be fine. You need to be a little bit more considerate. Okay, but with question here. What should I do if I am pregnant? Uh, do you need to stop working with BDUs? Many scientifics have been carried out, which is a whole do not show a link between miscarriage or birth defects. Uh, how, however, it's not that there's no scientific uh, studies that have shown a correlation or connection with VDUs and pregnancies, but the anxiety and the stress may be the problem itself. And this is why, as you said, you just need to re re reassure them. And if they want to limit the amount of use that they're spending at their VDs, then so, so, so be it. It's something that you, you're, you, you need to consider.
but don't just suddenly dismiss it. Oh, you've got nothing. Okay, can working with VDs cause skin disorder? Yeah, because when we're sitting at our computer and we're touching our keyboard with half a million bacteria sitting there, and then we touch our face, and our face is becoming dry, as I said, because of the static electricity, and it's just hand-to-face contamination. So occasionally it can, and you see people with red faces or pimples. A small number of people do experience skin irritation, rashes, it can be due to a combination of dry air, electricity, uh, electrostatic charges in the room, and individual susceptibility, such as if you've got oil, oily skin. Okay, can working with BDUs affect eyesight? Mm, no. There is no evidence that BDUs causes disease or permanent damage to your eyes other than the uh, general aging process. Normally, if you're born or your uh, early part of your life is 20-20 visions, you are going to need glasses later on as you get older for reading. And the reverse works as well. Fatigue or intensive VDU work can cause discomfort or make you aware of an eye problem you did not know about. Now, this is because, as I said earlier on, you are looking at something at middle distance, not short distance and long distance. So the problem might be there already, but it only come to fruition or light because you are now looking at something that is middle distance. At that time, you need to go to the opticians and get your eyes tested and wear spectacles for BDU works to reduce that. But there's no scientific evidence that says it will make your eyes deteriorate any quicker than the normal process of, of getting old. Is it all right to wear lenses? As I said earlier on, ideal uh, because of the environment that you're working in, the dry environment, when you concentrate on a screen, you unconsciously, you know, will you will blink less. Uh, and that reduces the you know, lubrications into your eyes, making them feel sore and dusty. So basically, I wouldn't recommend wearing uh, contact lenses when you're working with uh, for long durations on on a on a monitor on a, on a computer. So I said, wear glasses where possible. Okay, think differently, think safely. Any questions from anybody? We haven't had any questions so far. What one question I thought of, which is increasingly common, any tips from people who are hot desking? You know, more than one well, person using desks. Yeah, if you yeah, well, that's that's quite common in London. When I used to go to London, they used to have hot desks sort out, but you know, you're there for a short period of time and you're gonna hot desk with a laptop. Now when I, I went to London, the hot desk was just like a coffee bench uh, and big high stalls. The hot, the environment where you work, your computer should be set up ergonomically, whether you're there for an hour or eight hours a day. You know, you do see some good offices where they have got an office, a hot desk area, but hot desking is there where you're only there for temporary periods. If you're going to work on a station for longer than maybe an hour, two hours, then you should have the, the privilege of docking stations, you know, where keyboards are very available and you can put, place your laptop into a docking station. But that, that's for a long time. This is where, you know, if you look at the UK regulations, it doesn't cover uh, laptops because they don't consider laptops as part of an ergonomic setup because it's impossible to achieve, you know, you can't tilt, the, okay, you can tilt the screen, you can't tilt the keyboard, etc. So the guidance for laptops is that they should always be used uh, in a docking station, even if you're hot desking. So if you go to a, a office and you're going to be there for two hours and you ask the receptionist, can I, uh, have you got any docking stations where I can do some work? You'd expect to find uh, docking stations for your laptops in an ideal world. Great, thank you. Even though you know all these things, it's always good to have a reminder because as you were going through your presentation, I was straightening up, tidying up, up my desk, checking my monitor. <laughs> <height>. <laughs> Just moving, moving from, yeah, the biggest biggest problem is is we store too much under the desk. That's what I see a lot. We store too much under the desk because it's out of sight. Uh, but look, laptops aren't are, laptops are not ergonomically designed. They're designed for temporary use when you haven't got access to your proper computer. 
Uh, but that doesn't mean to say that you can't set them up ergonomically, but you need a laptop docking station. That's, that's what it is. Great. But nowadays, you see children on them for eight hours a day, video games, etc. And you know what's going to happen in the future. So, yeah, I uh, hope that answered your question. It does, yes. Um, now, we don't have any more questions. That was a really interesting presentation and it's always good to have a reminder. So I'd like to thank you for your presentation tonight. I'd like to thank everybody for attending. The recording will be on the YouTube channel in a couple of days and you'll get a link which will come with the email that comes after the webinar. I'd like to wish everyone a good evening and see you at next month's webinar. Thanks, Rhys. Okay, thank, thank you very much. Okay, bye.